coming to you guys, and I didn't get to look through them. So I totally understand. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Figured minutes that needed corrections were better than none. Can I can you say that Scarlett's not coming? Yeah, she pretty much said that. one of those I've been here all the time and I never noticed I don't think they've always been like this oh yeah those are nice Where though? I don't think she's in Bellingham right now. Mommy says I'm like ignore her. No. Hey, Bill, are we recording? Are we online? Yes, you're recording. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready to start. So I will call the uh, Cedar Woolley Planning Commission meeting of February 21st, 2023 to order at 6.33 p.m. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America United States and to the Republic Republic for which it stands, one nation, one under nation, God, indivisible, under with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Bro. Roll call. Commissioner Freiberger. Present. Commissioner Cock. Present. Paul, online? Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Frenette. Here. Commissioner Fatizi, President. President. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Huggins, present. present. Commissioner Maddox, absent. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda of January 17th, 2023. Has everyone had the opportunity to take a look at it and are, are there any comments? Just two minor little tiny things. Okay. They are. <laughs> um, I'm always behind the eight ball at this moment. That's okay. Uh, our new member's last name was spelled wrong the second time it was mentioned. Oh, I should have meant caught that. 
It's right under the Planning Commission discussion information items, that uh, second sentence under that. How do I get out of this? Anybody have a hard copy? Uh, yeah, Joe does. I got a name too, but uh, that's all right. <laughs> okay. You need a hard copy oh, in minutes. Okay, you got that. Uh huh. And. Oh, there it is. Uh, the. RJ Holt. It's RJ Group. Okay. So we're going to the unfinished business, second page on me, I want to say, second paragraph. Scarlett Ponder, representing the RJ Group, was also in attendance. Scarlett gave a brief introduction stating the RJ instead of RJ Group. So we will insert group after RJ, hope to incorporate these units in a future project in Cedro Woolley. Thank you. Anything else, Joe? Okay. Commissioner Johnson, anything? No. Commissioner Freiberger. Um, a couple of things. Uh, okay. Just a comment that uh, Nicole McGowan, uh, the last name is spelled G O uh, M C G O W A N, and it's spelled correctly the first time up at roll call, but it's um, sp spelled incorrectly under the unfinished business. There's three spots there, so just. Ms. Quinn, are you on that? <laughs> <laughs> And actually going back up uh, under general public comments, opened at 644, staff, comma, no participants. I'm not sure if staff's supposed to be in there by staff. Uh, it was a comment about staff not receiving anything from email and mail. So staff should be able to receive anything from staff. Uh, staff should be able to receive anything That's the next sentence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So just strike staff. Okay. Okay. And then... Condition number 15 on page two. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, they felt that the requirement for the signs should not be required and should be changed to shall. It actually should be changed to may. That's what they had requested rather than shall. So wait, say that again? <laughs> um, so read the, the whole sentence. They felt that the requirement for the sign should not be required and should be changed to shall as some allowable business but it should have been to may that's i i reread the rg group's comments and they had requested that it be changed to may rather than shall because um they felt that signs should be optional so okay but we did not okay that that's fine yes so that's that's just to clarify what they had okay. requested anything else Nope. Commissioner Huggins, on to you. I have no comments. Okay, and neither do I. So at this point, I would like to uh, hear a motion to approve the minutes from the January 17, 2023 meeting with the uh, minor amendments specified. Can I have a first? I so move. Okay, Commissioner Freiberger. All second. Second, Commissioner Huggins. Do we have any further discussion? With that, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None. Oh, thank you, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Motion carries Aye. with the following minor amendments. Thank you. Okay. On to our uh, general public comment section of the night. Please limit comments to three minutes or less comments may also be submitted via email or mail ahead of the hearing i'm sorry ahead, ahead of the general public comments and read into the record please send comments to 
and McGowan at cedrowoolley.gov by mail or the planning department to be read into the record. So we will open the general public comment section at 6.40 p.m. At this time, staff, do we have anyone that submitted any emails or anything written by mail for our general public comment section? We have not. We have not. Okay. Is anyone in the audience or online, uh, do we have anyone online that would like to make a comment? I guess not. So at that point, I will close the general public comment section here at 6.40 p.m. And we will now be moving on to our public hearing section. So at this particular phase, uh, our public hearing will be possible amendments to Chapter 1704 SWMC to add a definition for live work unit and amendments to Chapter 17.20 and 17.28 SWMC to specify parking requirements for live work units. With that, staff, will you please introduce the general, I'm sorry, the public hearing. Sure. So last time we spoke on this matter, we kind of had a pretty good overview of the background of the project. Um, and we, let's see, we heard some public comment from the RJ group. We had a really hefty discussion on how this uh, this code amendment, would want, we would want it to look. Um, so since the last time we spoke, we've put in a number of changes that had to, had, let's see, so we wanted to refine the conditions for we're going to be calling these work-live units <laughs> from now on. So uh, we were kind of looking at how can we make this um, be, how, how can we make it so that it's clear the intent for these units is commercial first and residential as a secondary. So we had the idea to change it around. Instead of live-work units, we're now calling these work-live units. We've changed the location of where those are going to be in the definition. So um, that's going to be the first major thing. And bear with me. I'm going to do my best. I know we've been calling them live-work units. So um, yeah, work-live from now on. So um, basically, we're looking at balancing the um, restrictions with the allowances with these things. I know that there were some concerns that we heard from the RJ group that some of those things might be a little more on the restrictive side. And we, could, we took a good close look at those things, but also wanted to keep um, with the idea that these are commercial intentions. <coughs> so, um, you know, having these be units that bring the public in um, and really we're trying to make sure that these are providing a workspace function for people to also reside in. So um, since they're allowed in the commercial zones, the commercial use should be first and foremost. So um, the amendments have kind of been revised to, we included a clear intent in the definition um, to try and emphasize that point, um, something that we can back up in case there's anything that comes up interpretation-wise that we can fall back on and say, you know, these are intended to be commercial space first. Um, so I can go through the changes I've made in the draft here. Um, so the intent within the definition, we've put in the primary intent of a work-live unit is to provide a working commercial space for the occupant with secondary living space. I've gone on to change all of the locations where it says live work to work live. Uh, as we spoke about before, I removed that um, non -more, no more than five non-residential workers or employees are allowed to occupy the commercial area at any one time. I changed the commercial portion of the unit, shall not exceed it now says 1,500 instead of the 3,000. Um, we wanted to put in something about uh, garages because we wanted to make sure that we weren't um, using those as storage accessory to the commercial space. So 
indicating that those are going to be considered part of the residential space and that they cannot use it for storage for the business. Um, we specified that the main entrance needs to have commercial windows and doors, need to be able to identify it as a business space from the exterior, visible and accessible from public right of way or private commercial industrial parking lot that's open to commercial travelers. Uh, let's see, we changed up number 14. Um, let's see, just change up the wording a bit because we were talking about how certain facilities would be allowed, but limited to staff or clientele, such as um, kitchens, laundry facilities, or bathrooms containing a shower or bathtub. You can have those with the commercial use so long as they're limited to staff and clientele. I specifically kept the sleeping facilities are prohibited. Um, we added in number 18. Uh, work live units shall have two water meters installed. This was uh, gonna to because the charges are separate for commercial versus residential, and to make sure that that was something we um, anticipated for the permitting side of things for the utility department. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. We added in that the agreement would be um, a recorded document with the Skagit County Auditor's Office, um, and any future owner would need to re-sign uh, re and submit a new agreement to be recorded with the auditor as well. Um, just kind of giving us some teeth to enforce the rules that we're making here. Um, and then the last change I made was I, I reworded number 22 to try to add some clarity to that. Um, but that's an attempt at limiting the number of work live units allowed in any given commercial development. So, yeah, that's everything. So, if we want to open this up to discussion, are there anything, uh, any of those? conditions in there that we would like to discuss more you know let's let's get into that after I open up the uh, public hearing sure. and then we'll we'll hit that up afterwards because I have a couple questions myself so at this point if you would like to speak please state your name and address or any group or organization you represent so I, I will open up the public hearing portion at 6 47 p.m. And at this point, if we have any audience members, which I do not see anyone here, do we have any online members wishing to uh, speak? Bill, is there anyone that you have, whether it's a phone link or I don't see anyone? There's nobody, there's nobody online. But, um, just for record, anyone who is online can speak. OK. At this point, going out to the digital universe, is there anyone online that would like to speak? Did we get any mail or emails no. for anything? Okay, I guess at this point I will close the <clears throat> public hearing at 6.48 p.m. since uh, no one's here to uh, make any uh, commentary. So at this particular point, we'll open it up to uh, our Planning Commission discussion, and I'll start right to left this time. So, uh, just a point go, of go ahead. clarification. In the memo, there's a written um, written comments from the RJ group that were re received okay. um, the day after the last public hearing, or the last after the last meeting, and um, you know, those, for all intents and purposes, are you know, written public comments. Okay. So, so it's already here. I mean, do you want me to read it out or? It's, 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 it's an attachment. I, I read it, by the way, so. It's essentially what they, it's exactly what they had uh, read off of during I, our last time. I get time, it, so. yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we'll just note that on uh, attachment two memorandum dated January 18th, 2023, that will be included in this uh, open, in this public hearing uh, section as an exhibit. Is that correct? Okay. 
So with that, on to Planning Commission discussion. Commissioner Huggins, we'll start with you. All right. Um, uh, I have several um, things that I, I wanted to talk about on this one. Um, so th this is turning into a whole different thing. Um, live work units typically are um, are basically units that the concept of them is that uh, someone who might have be like building boats or grinding coffee or binding books or doing herbs or whatever in their garage, it gives them another opportunity to be more like a business and also be like a buffer to, um, to uh, between commercial and residential or industrial and residential or industrial and commercial. Um, this is getting really um, uh, big. The, the residential units of it are getting big. Um, oh, that was the other thing. Sorry, I had to write down another thing. Um, square footage um, is starting to get rather big. It's supposed to be an affordable way for people to, uh, uh, who are trying to get the foot in the door with a business uh, to do that uh, with something that they might not be able to get away with on their carport or in their garage because of the noise it makes and, uh, and whatnot. So um, my, my first thing is uh, I, um, I understand now why you changed it from work, uh, live work to work live because we're stressing the fact that it's more work and home is secondary. So uh, that one goes off. Um, number four uh, on the definitions. In your, in your defi uh, well, in your list of, uh, yeah, in definitions. Uh, number four, it says both, uh, it says through the uh, access has to be through the uh, through the commercial part of the, the business, and I think that um, you know it is a home, uh, it is somebody's home as well as their business. So, most of them that I've seen, the, the, you approach the um, the business through the the big raise up garage door, whatever it's got, and uh, and then you can access the residence either through the business or you can uh, enter the business through a side door, which is an egress for the business, and also there's usually a stair there, and you can go up to. Uh, to the, uh, the unit behind. Um, I have a problem with the unit above or behind. Uh, I, don't, I don't like behind because now you're taking up uh, commercial or industrial space that um, could be used for uh, industry by area that is now residential. So you're putting a residential on the ground floor so you're taking up uh, more, uh, more area within this thing. So I think they should remain as most live work units are above um, above the business use. Um, number five, so I, I would change it to say uh, both through and, excuse me, on number four, I would change it to say both through and outside the commercial space. Um, or no, can I, yeah. do we handle some of these one by one? Like if we have comments about, like try to clarify oh. what the intent was on this. Oh yeah, that's, as, that's as, fine. As we, I was trying not to take a lot of time, and I had like six of them, so I, oh. <laughs> so I was trying not to. Take your time. So take your time, yeah. For, so for num so I, I think uh, number four, the, the intent behind access, what it reads is access shall be provided to the residential portion of the work-live unit through the commercial portion. So that's not intended to say that you have to like the only access to the residential is through the commercial and it's not saying that you need to get to the commercial through the residential um, the intent is to have a connection between the residential and the commercial because they are all one unit occupied we don't if the concern was if you have commercial on the the lower part with no connection to the residential yeah. Now it's pretty easy to just lease it out. It looks right. like looks like a mixed commercial building instead of a live uh, instead of a work live building. Okay, so I, that's I the misinterpreted intent. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. uh, we're of course we want this to read the way the planning commission feels it should be. So I'm not defending the way it's written, but that was that was the intent behind it. And so okay. if you want to discuss that and make any suggested changes. So I, I would add into that, and not limited to other ingress, egress points into the residential unit. Because the way I've seen them, I've seen the doors are behind it. So you have the, the commercial side up front on a streetscape, and entrance into the residential unit in the back or on the sides, right. as well as through the business section itself. 
and even just from a, I don't know, a, a safety standpoint of having other ways to get out of a building in case of a fire or other emergency, right? You're going to have, you're going to want other ways of getting in and out of the uh, residential portion. Yes. That's a good point. I, I had also assumed that that meant it was the only access, and I was wondering how that would work for yeah. uh, fire safety, yeah. ingress, egress. I would say a fire would be more likely in the commercial section, depending on what, what's in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, as I said, the, 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 most of the ones I've seen, the, um, it's, a, it's a, another egress for the, um, for the business in case mm -hmm. there's a fire or something, uh, uh, or if they just want to go, uh, but they can also go from so you come in through the the front whether that's a raised top door or whatever uh, like a garage door um, or roll up door and then if if they need to go out the back because the front is blocked they can get out that side door uh, through a vestibule or up to their unit if they want to go up to their unit without having to go outside to go uh, to go into it, and it but it could be a one-story structure too it doesn't necessarily need to be an up down a two-story structure I've seen them where it's it's behind like uh, convenience stores actually, yeah. where you have the convenience store up front and then the living unit behind it, right. where you have access into the commercial section through the living unit, into the commercial. But there's also access behind other family members, things like that. Right. You know? and, and you guys may not agree with me, but I, I would like to see that not happen. I'd like to see the, uh, them be the commercial on the ground floor and the residential above. Just uh, just because it takes up less commercial or industrial space with with it basically you're, when you put it behind you're just build it you're you're just saying for every commercial building you can have a house that's that's all you're saying and so um, and so it, it's taking square footage away from the intended uses of the of the thing whereas like on the main street you know we didn't we don't allow businesses on the main street to to have their businesses on fronting the street and then a house behind there are the, the units that are in the built buildings are up above so you're saying that it has to be a minimum of a two-story structure yeah and that's for uh two reasons one because it's it's more practical and less expensive to build but uh but it also uh it, it, it's um uh it, it also buffers more which is the whole point of live work units i mean it's not the whole point but it's one of the other uses of live work units is as a buffer between uh, commercial, industrial, and residential, or between uh, industrial and, uh, and commercial. So, okay. well, there's nothing in here that specifies it needs to be a two-story yeah. building. Right. So anyway, uh, give it some thought because uh, I, I, I really not inclined. And there's several things in here I'm not inclined to go along with this because uh, it's turning into Keep another. No, 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 don't worry. Another about animal. So you, you brought up um, residential behind. Um, I did it. I, I don't recall. Do, does it actually say residential behind, so uh, located above or There's behind? A, so in mm, the, the first part of the definition, located above or behind a, a commercial use. Um, and then... The CBD right so why don't, we, why don't we discuss that? Um, in the CBD, we do allow above and behind for uh, residential can be above and behind and as a precursor to what's going to be coming to you soon we've been having problems with that because we don't have any regulations saying uh, how much of the front needs to be commercial and so um, we're faced with some <coughs> projects that are trying to squeeze the commercial down to practically yeah. Uh, you know, a very small space and then have all residential behind. So yeah. we'll be bringing that to the Planning Commission for review. I'd, I'd like to see that. To tighten that yeah. up. Um, so since that's a relevant conversation and a relevant issue that we're having and it's coming up here, um, I believe we've got limits on the amount of downstairs space. Um, it doesn't, well, not the, we don't have any limits on the amount of residential on the main floor in this either. Um, we just say that the minimum size of the commercial is 300 square feet. So that's the only limitation of how much residential could be is you know, they could have 3,000 square feet on the, on the downstairs and of residential you know, 300 square feet of commercial the way this is written so you bring up an interesting point that you know as you got me thinking I wanted to bring that up. was my point earlier when I walked in 
Yeah, I thought we had it the opposite. Anyway, let's continue on with this four. And Danielle, I'm going to start with you on. I think Pat still oh, had a few more. I just don't want to jump around with too many things at once because this is definitely something worth talking about. Okay, well, that's fine as, as, long, yeah, as long as I get to go through them. Oh, yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. But let's talk about this ingress-egress thing because I think it is an important point, even from a, a public safety standpoint. So let's start with this number four, and we'll go down the line, okay? And then we'll come back. Okay. And everybody's still going to get their say on everything else. So this is going to be long, and I knew it would. So go ahead. Um, on, well, I, I think I already kind of said what I was thinking okay. on that, so long as there is okay. uh, clarity added to that, uh, per your suggestion, of um, that we're not excluding other entrants. Yeah, to the, um, well, either the commercial or the residential, because I see what you're saying about having a kind of a side door so that, you know, so. Commissioner Johnson. I mean, I would agree that there, there probably should be additional clarification, um, clarifying language that um, allows for additional ingress and egress for the residential portion. Um, I mean, I think the commercial portion should be fairly self-explanatory for somebody um, as to where the commercial space is, because that's, that's the primary focus of this. Um, but as far as like the, I don't want to limit the creativity of an architect to build one of these units and not have something that has to be strictly through, um, you know, a commercial portion. Because um, I could see where, um, an example that I would think of is next, like the alleyway between the post office and the old bank building. Mm -hmm. It's on the corner of Woodworth and Metcalf. If you go around to the back, there's a stair access that goes up to the residential portion. I don't see why that can't be incorporated into a situation like this. Thank you. Commissioner Frenette. I think we all agree that uh, it just needs clarity that we all want other access other than through the commercial space. So we just need to clarify it. Okay. Commissioner Cock, you're online, so yeah, I, I don't want to get to I'm you. Fine with, uh, I'm fine with clarifying um, the language. But, you know, in my neighborhood, neighborhoods I've seen around town, a lot of the sort of work areas in the work live are garages. And... Uh, they're either garages attached to the house or sometimes they're garages that are not attached to the house. They're, you know, separate and sometimes and there's a walkway to the house. So I'd give some flexibility to maybe people being able to do that. That's my thought. Okay. Have we taken notes of additional ingress, egress yeah, points? So uh, we're just going to add something to the effect of uh, uh, the uh, residential, uh, the residential portion will not uh, is not intended to be limited to one ingress or egress. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was just yeah number four was just intended to say there needs to be a connection through. It was implied that there would be a completely okay. separate entrance somewhere, but we can clarify that. Okay, keep going. I think we're good on four. Uh, staff would like to get back to the the bigger issue about. Um, like how much should be allowed above and behind? How much residential should be allowed behind, if any? You know, I have that on my list. So why don't we let uh, Commissioner Huggins continue on? And yeah. I think I think we could leave that for last because I think that's going to be one where there's going to be a lot of varying points of view on it. And okay. So, uh, personally, yeah. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go on to number. Okay. five and then we can do that one um, so number five uh, says that it can be um, add here so I can read off it. residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the operator or an employee of the associated business and so again th these are aimed at, at at helping somebody who is doing it in their garage but they want to they're not big enough to be a real commercial space 
So uh, it's a, what do you want to call it? It's another niche housing kind of thing. And so uh, the reason I'm bringing up these things is not because I don't believe in any of the, idea, uh, in the ideas that are here. It's that I want to keep LiveWorks, LiveWorks. And if we want to create a new kind of housing type mm -hmm. that is, uh, you know, that fills a niche for people, we can do that. But I don't want to turn uh, LiveWork housing into, um, into another kind of hybrid uh, monster thing. And so, um, so on number five, where it, it's saying it has to be uh, that, I think it should say that it has to be owner-occupied um, or that it can be the owner or manager if it's a franchise, right? Because you made a, if, if you have some kind of little franchise coffee grinding thing and you can do that in a live work unit, you, uh, you might be the manager. You may not be the owner of, of the name of the business. You may just be, you may have a franchise uh, management position. So I can see that person living there and doing it. But I don't see it being uh, like an annex of a, of a major corporation that just wants to do a uh, portion of their business in there, and they're going to let any one of their employees live there like it's company housing, uh, and, and I, I want to avoid that. Because then it's just an apartment unit, and, uh, and that's not the point of live, live work units. So anyway, that's another thing that we can, we can chew on a little bit um, a, as we're doing this. Um, we don't have, this is not on there anywhere. Um, so, well, why don't we yeah. stop oh, and okay, discuss sorry. them one by one. And what I can say is right. the, way we written, the way it was written, r at least the way I was envisioning and when it was written was to be very much what you described. So it's just I think it might just be the language, the way it got put to paper maybe didn't fit the vision exactly right. So I don't know that any, I don't, I know that staff didn't necessarily disagree with the way you proposed it at all. Uh, we just used different words and it seems to not be uh, hitting the mark quite right. Oh, okay. I think we I think we left a little flexibility for like if it's employees of whoever owns the building to be able to do so. But if you just right. uh, if but again with the envision that'd be something small like somebody who lived nearby and not like a corporate thing. But um, we don't have any problems with changing it to owner or or manager of a franchise. Yeah. Yeah. I guess kind of the, the hang up there was what, what words to put in really, you know, because we've got owners, operators, managers, employees, et cetera. So how, whatever words we want to use, let's discuss that. Okay. Yeah. The, the only thing that- Do you this, mean business owner or building owner, by the way? I wasn't even thinking from, a, from an ownership point of view. I assume that some of them might be rented out and some of them might actually be owned by the owner of the building, but the person living in the unit should be the person who owns the business or the manager if it's a like a franchise franchise situation we can say associated business owner or yeah the owner of the business mm -hmm. in the unit you know that's tough to police where i think we're getting to a point right now where i mean i'm looking at singular words here operator or employee mm -hmm. that's not the reality of it if you're going to put a residence behind it you might have a family of operators, <laughs> just saying, a husband, a wife, kids, oh, they're all operators of the business. So how are we going to end up policing something like that when all of a sudden we're potentially talking about a plus 1,000 square foot residence on top of the, or side by side or whatever with the commercial side? So I don't know so how you to define it that. Is, so, it's self-policed, that's, that's what the affidavit is saying, we will do this. Yeah, I, I, I think I would actually disagree, though. I think that it's actually very important, and the whole intent and purpose of this needs to be focused on, you know, the owner-operator. So, you know, I would say something to the effect of inhabited by the commercial owner or operator um, of the associated business. I, I do think that the employee thing does take away. At that point, it's just a commercial space that happens to have a rented unit above it. Um, and I think that really this needs to be focused on the business owner. I mean, that's the point of these, is the business owner and to help incubate uh, small business. So um, I, I think we really need to keep the focus on that. And I think the words really do matter. And it may not be easy to police, but they do swear to an affidavit, and if they get caught, that's their problem. 
So I got, my question is, what if you have a, a husband-wife team, which is really common, so they're, they're going to run the business, but you have more than two people that are going to be in that, mm -hmm. that residential portion of the unit. I'm, not, I'm just throwing it out there that from a practical standpoint, the way this is written is in a singular context. Okay. Well, I, this is something that that might, might also be. be wording too, Joe. I, I mean, my 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 understanding of them and what I've seen is that if you own the business downstairs, you and your tribe, your your you and your wife and your kids or whoever you and your partner and your kids or whatever, are going to be living in that unit. Not mine if I'm an employee or something or mm -hmm. just somebody in the community. It's it's going to be you and your your tribe in the in the upstairs there. And um, and but it's not limited to just. The owner, like everybody, the rest of the family has to go have a house someplace. It's uh, it's, it's intended for uh, the people you can fit in the the unit. I get it. I'm just reading number five in the way it's written. The residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the operator and or an employee. It doesn't say what you just said, and yeah. that's my point. Because yeah. <laughs> it might be multiple people, but this is not what that says. Right. So, so what yeah. we what I've drafted here is the residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the owner of the business or the manager of the associated business. And, you know, as far as I'm interpreting things, and, you know, I'm not going to be the one sitting in this chair for the next hundred years regulating this, is, you know, I would, I would assume by when we say owner of the business, that would also allow the owner's family to live there. Okay. Um, but I, 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 we are getting pretty deep into the weeds, so if we're going to get this deep into the weeds, hey, let, like, it, it might be worth discussing if, if we need to say owner and family and owner's family. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's probably pros and cons to that. Right, also. and that's a dangerous word these days, too. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, so I don't it, know how much more clarification did, you want to put but, in there. Yeah, I mean, how did we word it in the... Um, in the ADUs, I mean, it's the same situation um, where where the ADU or the house has to be has to be um, inhabited by the owner. Um, so it just says it, it has to be a, uh, yeah. by owner, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's all we need to say is that the unit has to be um, occupied. The residential part has to be occupied by the owner or a manager. Um, you know, for a franchise situation, so that. So the, the way I just suggested the, the revision, the, resi the residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the owner of the business or the manager of the associated business is the same as the way we wrote it for the ADUs. Yeah. A comment to tighten that up, just say the owner or manager of the associated business and not put business in there twice. No, we have it now as or an employee. Why would we have to? I mean, that, that that's getting into somebody else's business, though. Why does it have to be a well, manager? That's, it could that's be. why I that's why I said franchise because that's the only that's the only situation where I can see that meets the criteria of a live work that um, where it wouldn't be the owner, you know, as if somebody buys a, a franchise and he can do it out of his house there, then that person doesn't actually own the name of the business or whatever. He just does his his uh, franchise there but uh, so he's actually he's actually a manager or I mean like somebody it's different but like at McDonald's you you may or may not own your franchise but you're the manager of it and and so um, so if you have some kind of franchise that's something you're doing in your live work unit then um, mm -hmm. then you, uh, you, you might you know that would exclude you from being a live work situation so <clears throat> Well, if yeah, you're a franchise owner. Oh, that's true, franchise owner. So, okay, just leave it as, as long as you interpret it that way, that's, uh, yeah. As long as it gets interpreted that way. <laughs> okay, going down the line here, any comments on the owner, employee, or... Well, is this meant for sole proprietorship, or is it meant for... It could be a sole proprietor, right, exactly. And yeah. should ownership be a term, or sole proprietor be a term, if that's what our goal that, is? Right the, now. The, now you're getting into business structures and things like that. that that's what I'm saying. It's like... Okay, because when you say manager, that sounds to me like someone buys this place for somebody and puts them in there and says, run my business for me. 
that's what I'm trying to avoid is yeah. Yeah. You know, for th for this particular type of a unit, you know, this niche. So just in, uh, the residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the owner of the associated business. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. If that's what our goal mm -hmm. is. Going once. Twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not reality, though. That, that, hang on a second. We were, we were talking about that the last time. Okay, you might have a situation where it's a, a type of business that has a 24-hour sequence for whatever reason that somebody needs to be on site. It could be a, a process that takes 24 hours and there's multiple people having to come in to, to make sure something finishes, completes, whatever. I can think of a bunch of businesses specifically on the uh, IT side where you might have something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and also with more long-term Airbnbs, would this prevent I think the owner part of the residential is extremely important because yeah. somebody could do a long-term Airbnb and then the Airbnb people could have a business, right? If you didn't have the owner part in there for residential. So I, I, I'm okay with the, you know, saying that it's the uh, um, operator or maybe the operator or, I don't know, manager employees gets me a little worried. Well, I don't, I don't think that anywhere in, in any of this I read does it preclude the fact that you, you have, may, might have a couple of employees that work for you during the day. So, I mean, if you own the business and you're living upstairs and you have an employee that needs to come in at 3 o'clock in the morning and turn a crank, he can get in the side door or go into the place and do what he needs to do and leave. There's no problem with that. Um, but you're still living upstairs with your tribe and it's your business uh, down below. So that's, yeah. that's, fine. that's yeah, not a problem. Way worded now an employee can live up there right and yeah and I uh, the, I don't really want that personally you know that's not how I see them so because then it's just, then it's just company housing and not uh, and not a live work thing for uh, for an entrepreneur or a sole proprietor whatever right. you want to call uh, whatever you want to call it and again like I said I'm not trying to stop variety of housing types I just want to keep one niche what that niche is and if we want to borrow something or create something else that does another thing, then we can, we can certainly do that, right? We're a planning commission. We can, we can uh, try to create anything we want. So. so to summarize what we're saying, so it must be inhabited by the owner of the property, which can easily be right. confirmed with all types of, yeah. Is well, that what actually, we're saying? Well, actually, what we put is owner of the business. business owner yeah. of the business, yeah. In case they're leasing the whole building, you know, somebody else could own the property, but the owner of the business has to live and work there. Yeah, I think like Sil Silas's, they, they they actually own their units, but uh, but a lot of them they, they do, don't. Yeah. Pe people just yeah, lease them from from somebody who put them up, and yeah. So the, what we're recommending, based on what uh, we've heard from the planning commission, uh, we've already drafted uh, the following language. The residential portion of the unit must be inhabited by the owner of the associated business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and um, council uh, <laughs> commissioner Cock, I appreciate you, that you brought up you know Airbnb. This would preclude someone from uh, having allowing uh, air, using any making their unit into an Airbnb. Right, and it doesn't limit an owner to buy the building and lease it out to somebody else as well. So you got that flexibility on top of that. I'm going to operate the business. Now I'm going to move myself upstairs. I'm the owner of the business, and I'm going to bring my tribe up with me. That's what we're allowing. Just yeah, I, I think one key to all of this is to preclude absentee ownership um, that could slide in and open up some quasi business and and like somebody said you know cheap housing for their employees that's what we don't want yeah i agree well we're going to you because the, the owner of the business but that could still happen 
right? So I know. You, you, have an, you have somebody that owns the property and somebody coming in XYZ business or whatever, okay, they now can live there and as long as they have that sign up front that says XYZ business, depending on the size of the residential, uh, you know, portion, they'll be able to pretty much do exactly that though. Oh, right? That, right? That would still be an absentee owner yeah. as long as you can lease it. Well, I just know from my time working at Western, one of our big problems was all the student housing around the university. A lot of it was absentee housing, and, and they could care less. They didn't fix them up. They didn't care if 10 students lived in a three-bedroom apartment, I mean house. So I just think anything to encourage owner-operator uh, in this work live thing would be great. Yeah. By the way, that hasn't changed. It's called High Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Billy, that's, that's Billy Frank's street. It got renamed. It's been renamed to Billy Frank Jr.'s street. Oh, okay. Right. Since when? <laughs> it's got to be very recent. A couple recent. Of years ago. Yeah, it was the, the it's name my was daughter's a little bit too, too accurate. <laughs> so, uh, again, Commissioner Cock brought up a, a point that we've been struggling with since the I mean it's actually the reason why we brought this to the Planning Commission is what to do about it just to be uh, these units just becoming apartments just becoming someplace to live that's why we put in here requirements for the businesses to have a business license and so like we're looking for ways to require a real business to be in there and we've stopped short of saying like if you don't have a business license in an operable building you got to move out like that was I mean, that we'd love to be able to do that but we're just not sure we want to go that far so that is particularly the issue that we struggle with um, so you and that's why we have these affidavits saying that you know I own here, live here and I'll operate a business here um, I mean, it, I know from experience it gets pretty restrictive. I mean, if you're a non-conforming business, so you're, if you're in a, on a piece of commercial property and you're just using it as a residence, you can't do anything to it, basically, the property, because it's non-conforming as just a residential. So you're going to get pretty unhappy pretty quickly if you can't do the thing you want to do with your with your house because um, it's non-conforming and, and maybe I'm wrong but, but well that, it wouldn't uh, be non-conforming because it is an allowed use the the problem is like well not the problem uh, what we're trying to do is create regulations that require it to be a business first yeah. and uh, and 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 that and have people who own them set, or sign something saying hey I recognize this is a, a work first live yeah uh, a secondary right. sort of situation and so people know that it's not just going to be a, this is not just a house yeah no in th the commercials this is your opportunity to get in, into commercial in a, yeah. in a less mean, expensive way yeah to be honest with you the the more we look at this the more uh, I'm leaning towards suggesting getting rid of live work units because they are just such a concern about we can't regulate certain things. Um, we're trying to provide the, the type of workspace that allows you to also live near your workplace, which I think is a useful type. But the more we get into the details, the more it's like, well, we can't regulate this. And we don't want to create rules that allow people to just turn our commercial zones into right residential zones Great. so like why would we allow this at all um you know small smaller scale might be important and we've tried that with number 22 by saying only 40 percent of the some building floor of areas of the buildings within a development can be live work or work live units um but i mean maybe maybe work live units live work units don't even belong in the commercial zone if we know that they're going to be abused. And I, I, I loathe to throw that out there because 
it's something that you know we've fought to put into our comp plan and development codes. Well, maybe we could talk to yeah. maybe we could talk to uh, other jurisdictions and see what kinds of problems they're uh, they're running into because uh, I, I don't know. I just I mean, if you suddenly turn it into just a residence, you're probably going to start to have problems with a lot of the things that are going on around you, right? Like banging it. Uh, all hours of the day and maybe at night and um, and uh, uh, the fact that you can't work on your your unit and whatnot so um, I mean I'm sure there are units all over that are that are, are not don't have businesses downstairs but the question is are the are those people continuing to live for years and years in them or are they just living in them long enough to move on and find an um, you know another job or another place to do the the thing so but I, I hear you we, we've got to sort that out because we don't want to just take up more um, commercial or industrial space with with residential would the existing uh, people that are, have businesses in their garage or whatever and some of them have been doing it for years would they be grandfathered in under these regulations or would they need to apply work live I guess that so because you know <laughs> these regulations these regulations wouldn't apply to somebody doing a business in the garage. These regulations, live work units, as uh, this, uh, as shown in here, or work live units, are only allowed in the commercial, the mixed commercial oh, okay. zone, I got it. and okay. the industrial zone. So, if somebody's just operating a home business out of their garage, then they can operate under a, a home occupation uh, regulations, um, which is which is different. You know that. We can't, we've got that okay. pretty much under control. It's the allowing residential in the, the industrial commercial. and commercial zones that has uh, become the I, sticking point. Yeah. I get it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah again, the, the, the concept was, was just that you've got this place where industrial and commercial bang up against each other or residential. I, I always like to say down by the, um, by the high school where the, the old uh, WRP uh, mill was and then across the street you've got residential uh, housing across to third street you've got residential housing if you were to build a big industrial thing there whatever it would be um, the, the whole concept of live work was that there are certain people that you know might have that need stuff that's in the industrial place or their their daytime job is compatible with industrial you know because they're building something in there and it, but it makes less noise than the industrial does, so it's a good buffer for the residential people. And they're, they're uh, right across the street from, from residential, and that's how I've always kind of uh, uh, pictured it, is in those, those kind of situations. Uh, in Sumner, where we saw it, it was between residential and, um, between, uh, residential and commercial, which is a little different, but it seemed to work there, too. You know, people had dance studios, and a guy was building boats in one, and um, I think it was karate was the other one, uh, teaching karate classes. So it worked for both the, the commercial side and the residential side. Um, uh, so anyway, it, the, the point of the, them was really the, is that you kind of need a buffer between these things instead of just building a berm and a fence. And these units work there, and it creates a niche for um, entrepreneurs uh, who can't do it anymore in their in their garage to kind of have a place without having to lease a commercial or industrial space. And that's, that's the niche that it's, that it's, uh, that it's aimed at. Hey John, we have examples right now. Uh, it's the alleyway where, uh, Commissioner Johnson was talking about, uh, on the, uh, east side of Pioneer Marketplace. So you have all, all the buildings on Metcalf and on the back end there, it looks like a whole lot of residential, uh, units there right now. You know what I'm talking about? I'm Catherine Ware. So on the, the alleyway going down West State, okay, past Pioneer Marketplace, you make the left down towards the post office there in, in that back alleyway. Hmm. It looks like there's a whole bunch of residential units right there on that, that, that back street. Yeah, well, that's different than the live work. That's just, you know, residential above a commercial space. Okay. And uh, there are no permitted residential spaces up there. The one at the, in that building is actually, that's commercial space upstairs. Okay, I, I was just thinking on the lower level, on the street level, it looked like a couple of apartment units there. Uh, but that would be different than live work. Okay. That would be just, you know, mixed use, which is confusing to people. What's the difference between live work, work live, and mixed use? Yeah. 
Right, because you're right, you still have a residential component in the uh, mixed commercial uh, code. Yeah. yeah. Mixed use you can build above or behind, which, yeah, uh, yeah. which is how we worded this. But Well, not but actually not in the mixed commercial. You can only do above. Only above there too, okay. But in the CBD you can do, better that way. Uh, you can do above and behind. Right, um, I'm talking about the CBD, yeah. I wondered how they got away with that over there. By, I think uh, you can go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about examples I was of what we currently that have. Was, yeah, so. Right, yeah. so the difference really comes down to occupancy. Since live, work, work, live, you can only have, like, you can't lease them separately, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Would it, would it be feasible to specifically just disallow the use of work live units for Airbnb just say that you know just because to per, you know at least directly you know people will still do what they do but to be very upfront about it rather than that might be the quickest way to solve that well, you have these different, you know, there's also VRBO. And there's several others. I think, I think it, you know, Airbnb, their big future thing is long term rentals that they then, you know, rent to people. So I, I think whatever the word for that is, I, I think that's a great suggestion. You if know. we could have some. So currently, the term for VR, for Verbo or Airbnb or any of the similar is short term rentals. Yeah, but Airbnb shooting for long term, like a year at a time. Well, that's that's just now we're just trying to adapt to a changing marketplace. So yeah, that's yeah. one of the more that's one of the more challenging things to do in code is to address uh, dynamic new um, disruptions in the marketplace. And I, I would actually say that with landlord tenancy if you're renting at least a year or more you're no longer short term that's that's a standard lease agreement and so that's just residential so i i don't think that that would qualify as any sort of vrbo or anything like that and plus anything beyond a year uh to meet statute of frauds has to be recorded so that lease agreement would have to be recorded with the county anyways so my understanding was short term was less than 30 days and long term was 30 days or more. Um, but perhaps that definition varies depending on jurisdiction. I'm no, not, no, but you're right. Month to month sure. leases are pretty common. As a matter of fact, a lot of owners that are looking to sell their house, they want that tenant on a month to month mm -hmm. so the new owner can come on in. And my Be guys because I've seen where places had limitations on, on <laughs> short term rentals. Tell me why. <laughs> but you can advertise on. Airbnb and VRBO month, month, and that's how they were able to meet the code, but also rent out their house in the summertime for three months or whatever. So, and that was okay. But in this case, if we're trying to prevent that, and something that kind of came up today that uh, Commissioner Cock kind of made me think about is if you are having a big enough house that's possibly 1,500, 2,000 square feet, not house, but living space behind your or above your commercial, what is to keep you even as owner occupying, renting out a room mm -hmm. there in that space, you still have your residence or your commercial in front. And that is something I didn't think about. So, so we do, do we have a definition for short term uh, rental, I think. This came about through our ADU regulations when we specified that short-term rentals are not allowed in, uh, in ADUs. So we came up with a definition for short-term rental, which means a lodging use other than a hotel or motel in which dwelling unit or portion thereof is provided to guests by a short-term rental operator for a fee for fewer than 30 consecutive nights. A dwelling unit or portion thereof that is used by the same individual or individuals for 30 or more consecutive nights is not a short-term rental. I think we're getting off topic instead of looking at some of these live work because there's a whole bunch of them uh, so that still need to be addressed. 
Go ahead. Is, is there a way that we can put in that um, uh, residential only in a live work unit is a non-conforming use? Can we just say that? Um, well, non-conforming use is something that existed prior to the existing code, so we can't, okay. we can't create non-conforming non uses. We can't create non-conformance, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just want to set up a situation where that, you know, if, if they are just living in the upstairs unit and then they want to, you know, like trick out the garage and or the downstairs and turn it into a fancy garage with an extra room or whatnot, they, they can't do it because and that, that's usually incentive to move on when you need that extra room for something and you, uh, and you can't do it. Then, then now you're looking for a house that will do what you need. I mean, it's like anything, right? If you're living in a one-bedroom house and you have a kid, you got to look for a two-bedroom house. So, uh, we want to set, set up that situation where, where you, uh, uh, where where they want to move on. I guess is the thing. If they're not going to be doing what the intended use is, then uh, I don't want to throw people out. I, I I would like to see them make the decision to do the thing themselves. So, um, anyway. The one sticking issue that we keep coming up with is, say someone buys one of this with the, all the intent of following all of the rules. They, they start a business downstairs and, uh, and it does great and uh, by no fault of their own, you know, Mars attacks and now whatever they create is no longer useful or allowed or whatever. And so they go out of business. Long way of saying they go out of business, yeah. sorry trying to make it more interesting. Yeah. Just made it weird instead. <laughs> um, so anyway, they go out of business with all the intents of following the rules, but they own this building, so now they're 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 out of they're out of business. They're they're short on money and are they going to be able to move? So now they'll continue to live upstairs and not have any ability to use the down use the office, the the commercial space mm -hmm. legally. Um, so now, well, is that through no fault of their own, they're supposed to move, right? Because that's supposed right. to be an occupied space. And what happens is, you know, well, oh well, we've got all this extra space. We'll just store our stuff there. And we have stuff that says, well, you can't store your stuff there. But they're like, oh, I'm in a crisis. I don't care what the city told me. So yeah. we're creating a situation that is not only on. Enforceable. I mean, it is enforceable, but it's when people hit hard times, it's making it hard on everybody. Yeah. But we have that. We have that everywhere. I mean, if I if I have a three bedroom house, and my family, extended family, has a problem, and they want to move in with me, and times are hard, and you got to help out, uh, so you move in family into the other bedroom in the house. That's not, according to health standards, probably going to be. A livable situation long term, that, but that, people do it all the time. That's actually fine. There's there, there's there's uh, federal court regulations that you really can't tell so many how many people you can have living in a okay. single family. So home. they don't do that. They they move their motorhome into my driveway, and they're living within the in the thing on there. That's not allowed, really. We enforce so that too, we, though. We actually chase yeah. those around. Right. But the point I'm making is, is that it doesn't matter what kind of a living situation or work living situation you create, it's gonna have, it has already, or it's going to have some kind of fleas on it and and that we always have to work with because nothing's ever ever perfect and we're always tweaking like we were saying because of whatever's new technology or, uh, or models of business or whatever. So the question is do we throw it out because, do we throw it out as a, as a do we throw it out for the people who actually make it work um, because a couple people are going to abuse it, and I'm sure they do, um, because I see that in I see that happening in every neighborhood and every kind of housing style uh, that people are abusing the the rules that are set up by municipalities. So, um, so I don't want to see it go away, but I uh, but I understand the concerns of enforcement for for the for the city. That's just my point of view. I mean, the, I, oh, sorry, I wasn't here when uh, live work was originally 
put in to the code, but I assume that was for a very good reason and very thought out at the time, and it is something that is in other jurisdictions, so just to agree with Commissioner Huggins, it seems a bit overkill to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Just okay, but, but is, that code, could, is that code identified in the residential zones? See, if we look at the mixed commercial right now, you have the ability to put in residential anyway. That, that's already on the books. It's just not in the industrial, and this is not in the residential. So I think what, what, what you just said was I believe that a lot of that stuff is applies to residential zones, not not commercial zones that already incorporate residential components into it. Would that be correct? Well, think about it. We are in mixed commercial I, right I, I now. I don't you think can I quite right, followed you. I'm sorry. In our mixed commercial right now, you can already put residential units in the mixed commercial. So whether somebody lives upstairs and works downstairs, it doesn't matter. I believe a lot of this work, live legislation in other jurisdictions applies to those activities in residential zones, not specifically commercial zones, right? Because, I mean, you can do this right now. In this well, and one of, one now, of the analysis is that, uh, <clears throat> that Nicole put in stated what zones in of the other jurisdictions it was allowed. I'm, I'm not sure if it was in this analysis or not was it specific to their commercial zones or was it specific to their residential zones because we already allow it in our mixed commercial zone right Yeah, different tents for uh, for creating them. Yeah, yeah. Because here we were trying to we were trying to figure out different ways to buffer new industrial from residential that already existed, or a new housing development from agricultural land, and we were trying to figure what kind of buffers can you create. And of course, it doesn't work between residential and ag land, but um, but for residential, it's like, hey, why don't we put in units that are kind of half and half and put them in between? And those people aren't going to complain about a little noise and or whatever because they're making noise too. But they're going to buffer from the from the other thing, and so what we talked about, and I don't know if it ever got put in, was that um, was that the person who the, the late comer is the one who has to uh, has to solve that problem. So if it was a if there's a residential neighborhood there, and you're building industrial, well, it's the people that are building the industrial complex that would have to come up with some other kind of buffer trees, berms, whatever fences, or they could put the live work units in as a way to buffer it from the residential. Same against commercial. So th that was our whole point of view when we did it was uh, we were looking for buffering uh, uh, things to buffer uh, zo zones and make it a little softer transition, uh, both in scale and and, uh, and intensity. If the Planning Commission wishes to continue that, you know, using it only as a buffer, I mean, we could easily write something in that says, you know, uh, work live units are only permitted adjacent to residential zones up to a you know 100 feet deep or something you know something uh, reasonable or one building unit deep or one something unit, to that deep or something. to that effect so um, it limits it really to just one row along a, a residential an adjacent residential zone you kind of have that now. I'm thinking of that new building that was built on the corner of Rita and Ferry that would be that buffer in between the industrial zone that actually sat for a while, but there's somebody living upstairs, and again, it's mixed commercial there, and it does that exact same thing. Yeah, you mean that's the, just a mixed use. Yeah, the, but, but what I'm saying, but what, what's the difference between that and, and that? There isn't any. Right. Well, it, 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 yeah, you're right. Only that one, you could rent the upstairs. To, you, you could rent it to a business downstairs and rent it to a by upstairs, whereas the live work is intended that the person who has the business lives uh, in the thing with it. That's the only difference, really. What, what, what we, I think what we said, though, was if they own the business, they don't necessarily need to own the building. Right. Right. That's correct. Yeah. And I think we're splitting hairs at sometimes here. So... Well, all more argument to say that, you know, why have live works when you can just do a mixed use, which is practically the same, same thing. thing. And easier. <laughs> yeah, and it's already on the books. And easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
Like, yeah, like, yeah, like it's creating a situation. So then we have there to is a situation with the, the work live or live work, whichever way you do it, that one of the units might not be occupied because of one reason or another. Whereas if you have a regular mixed use building, if the commercial's not occupied, it, then the commercial's not occupied, whatever, but the residential is still allowed to be, and we don't need to worry about Right. That. So I'm just trying to see the process. So then if you're down by the high school there where I was talking about where the old, where they're cleaning it up and everything like that. So basically you would have to rezone a strip of mixed commercial along the west side of 3rd Street so that you could build mixed use commercial buildings between that industrial and the residential across across the street. Um, and is that complicated to, to do that? Uh, so if somebody wants to build, put a factory in there of some kind, and uh, you say, well, you've got to put some buffer, uh, some buffer in there if you want. Eh. If they want, they're not going to want to do live work because they're going to have to get a zoning change to uh, to mix to mix commercial. Uh, thing, so. Yeah, we would have to we would have to change the zoning. Right. Um, I mean, you bring up a good point. Maybe we allow this in just an industrial zone as a buffer to. Uh, residential neighborhoods and mixed commercial already allows uh, different types of you know unit residential above yeah. commercial so we don't really need to worry about this in the mixed commercial zone so maybe we maybe we just say they're not allowed in the mixed commercial zone uh, you just have to do mixed use in the commercial zone you can still buffer between the two but it would have to be on the industrial land and not on the uh, and not on the thing. So, so then, if that problem comes up, then you're, then you're, you are. No, it's not non-conforming. At least it's limited. It's, a, it's limited, yeah. But it does put more residential on industrial land. So, anyway, that's certainly a concept. I'm not against that. It, we just have to What's tweak it out. Financing. They can, if you'll have to ask them. But I, I, I the details. But it. It was financing. I think because the you know things they've said in the past is you know, they're not able to get money to finance commercial, but they can get money to finance residential, and so they can um, add, at least to the banks pass these off uh, live work units as residential units. With just a little commercial that you know the bank doesn't worry about, and you know that may be why they were looking to have uh, you know the workspace being 200 square feet. Right. Oh, um, that was <laughs> commercial ones are at a higher rate. Typically. You know, it, everything is situational. I'll tell you flat on out. There's different ways to skin cats when it comes to finances. There's all kinds of money out there called all different kinds of things. You can, you can crowdsource <laughs> and, it. And mine, yeah, there you go. Yeah, mine is, can, you know, based on things like, I think they remember them telling me, I, like I'm not testifying on their behalf. I'm, no, no, we, we get that, yeah. I, just want, I don't want it to be like, yeah. this is what they told me specifically because that's really just secondhand information, so. Scarlet. So are we still interested in this, or shall I <laughs> can my other uh, items? That, uh, uh, I, I had a question. Why would other municipalities have this if they also had the mixed-use thing? I mean, wh what problem were they solving? It was in the residential zone. That, that's, that, that's my take on it. Yeah. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's, a, that's a good I think, question, though, I think, right? you know, maybe that's a really good question for us to look into yeah. is what zones... Are, do other jurisdictions allow their live work and work live yeah. and what are they trying to achieve yeah. like why are they bothering to have them because like what you see from Tacoma they got a lot they have more regulations on it than what we've proposed um, so what is the benefit to them the, the benefit right. was the, the benefit I mean we I, we should still look it up but the benefit as I understood it 
when we originally did it was that if I want to start a business in my house um, and I, I want to build uh, walls for, uh, for small units of housing or something like that, and I want to do it on my big carport, I can't really do that in a residential neighborhood because um, I'm going to get all kinds of complaints about noise all the time because it's a business. But if I had a live-work unit, I could um, not have to buy a commercial space to build my trusses in. I could live above it not have to commute to it. So my expenses are a lot less, right, because I'm living in the building that I'm building my thing in, and nobody can complain because I'm in a zone that, um, where, where noise is kind of an expected part of, of things. And, uh, and so uh, it was a way to get entrepreneurs into living units um, uh, where they could also, could also build. I mean, it goes, it's as old as time, right? You got the potter did his pots downstairs, and then he went upstairs at night and went to sleep. The guy who uh, owned the little grocery store, they, there's thousands of them in New York City. And uh, you got the bodega below, and you go upstairs, and you go to sleep at night. And that was the, the concept. Uh, that's where the live-work concept came from. It was just a return to upstairs, downstairs units. And, uh, in, we in do, yeah, but we kind of do that now in a mixed commercial. And everything's situational, too. Tacoma has its own separate set of issues as the city of Seattle and right. all kinds of things. We could talk about that all night, but that's not the point here. But I agree. And Let's I find out where that I'm, – I'm sorry, I didn't oh, no, mean to, to interrupt you. Let's find out what zones that's been applied to. Because I'm saying in our code right now, because that's what we're looking at right now, specifically mixed commercial where we already permit these uses. I think, you know, possibly, I don't recall offhand uh, on the, the research uh, into other jurisdictions which zones these were in, but, or if I really thought about it, but, um, you know, some areas they have just a commercial zone, so then it would make sense, but we already have, as everyone was saying, the, the mixed commercial, so. I don't know. This way, they could combine that together, yep. as well as bring people to the public areas, to the busier areas. So they had kind of this opportunity to get a commercial space that they probably couldn't afford if it wasn't also their home. Yes, that that, 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 I that was exactly what live live works are. Yeah, and apparently they have a lot of empty buildings that they're trying to mm -hmm. change that, and but, because of that. I also believe Tacoma has regulations that you have to get your business license first before you get a live work or work live permit, mm -hmm. which means you they do have a way that says that that's a, uh, the way to make you have a business before they allow you to live in a live work work live. Mm -hmm. But there's still, as far as I would see, no solution if you go out of business. I mean, do they kick people out? I well, mean, we'll get you that Tacoma's got a couple of flyers. <clears throat> And <clears throat> in, in, in information, we'll get that Tacoma information to them. And and the people who do uh, Joe and and Joe and <laughs> Eric that know a little more about uh, commercial uh, real estate than I do, is is it feasible to uh, to live in the upstairs of a uh, of a live work unit or any unit where you have commercial downstairs? So you own it and you're not running your business anymore, is that actually feasible compared to just moving out and, buy, uh, and getting a house someplace? Because Everything is situational. It depends on what you do for a living. Architect, I can think of a lot of professional businesses that they don't want to practice anymore. Somebody retires, so they have that commercial office space vacant down on the bottom because they're done. Yeah. So now what, what are their options to sell the place where all of a sudden a new business of a similar type or whatever needs to come in and occupy that space. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, we kind of, we're talking about the mixed commercial here in this particular set of code, and it already exists. I've seen that whole live work concept for residential units, not necessarily for commercial units. This happens all the time. People live in the same building and work downstairs, and we have that right now in this. I've seen this particular kind of fit in residential zones. Interesting. Anyway, I'm done. <clears throat> okay. 
So are we doing general comments or are we still going down the list? <laughs> I think just, we're in general comments. I don't think this is going to okay. get done tonight. Myself. Feels like we blew this thing up and we're, yeah, we're kind of adrift. Now, yeah. On, yeah. on number four. Yeah. <laughs> we're all clinging to like floating I furniture think, at yeah. sea at this point. Yeah, okay. I think the only other um, comment that I had in here, and I think we were, we've already, we're already touching on it, Eric, is that um, is that um, we didn't set, you know, I think in the first iteration we had a set square footage limit on how big they can be, and that has gone away as far as I can tell. And then the 22 was kind of like a mixed metrics. It was um, how many units per, and then there wasn't a per anything, and then it was 40% of the total building floor area of, of all the buildings, which is a whole different metric. And so we just, I was going to say we need to clean that up, but, uh, but that's all I had on my thing here. So. <coughs> So yes, general comments are open. <laughs> uh, well, based on what's been said, I just wonder if we even need it, if mixed commercial handles it, and if we can get information from other municipalities, why they even have it. I mean, why why put another layer of uh, regulation if it's unnecessary? I think we agree on that, yeah. And I think that's where the direction's going right now, right? Uh. <clears throat> So I, I had four points. Um, on number 22, I, I wasn't here for the last one, so I, I don't know um, exactly what the calculation was or how you came to that. So I'd just kind of be curious. Um, two, on, on 19, the owner of the work live unit. So are we talking about the building owner or are we talking about the business owner? has to sign that affidavit. Business owner. Business owner, because the, just the way that I read that, the owner of a work live unit, because we're talking about the building itself could potentially be owned by a third party. It's just that the work live unit or dual units, um, associated units, um, have to be occupied by the <laughs> owner. So <clears throat> 19 just, to me, reads like the the actual building itself. Um, on twelve, I was I was thinking that the commercial portion of the unit shall be open to the public during business hours. Um, I was just going to kind of add more clarification language and just say during the regular business hours of the associated business. Um, it's just a suggestion, but then. Another thing that I thought of while we're, we were talking about this is, you know, you, you make you mention things happen outside of your control. You know, another thing, if, if you're entrepreneurial and you get your business going and you, you're entirely within the regs of this and you decide that you want to retire or you want to sell the business and do something else or it, I could see where it'd be hard to sell a business if like you're if you own the unit <clears throat> and all they want is to buy the business out um, you know because then you have to there's the whole thing about you know having to also have this building or this unit or this lease that you have to also buy into that you don't necessarily need to so I think it would preclude it I mean I don't know. The, the way the more we talk, the more I'm less inclined to actually vote for this. To be honest, um, I don't. I don't know if it's really like it, how much of a value add it has to our code. Um, and I think if we do, I would be more inclined if it was just more towards industrial. I'm thinking commercial, not so much. But I would love to get further information before actually voting. Anyone else? Well, kind of going off that a little bit, I, I kind of thought about it when I looked at the packet this time and thought, oh, we're just adding even more regulations and I think it's going to make people less inclined to take this option unless there's strong encouragement that way if you're doing, I guess, a development where you had to use it as a buffer. Um, you put too many 
regulations on it. And I know John said there's more <laughs> in other jurisdictions, but I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, you make it too difficult. People just aren't going to do it, especially if you have the option of mixed commercial in, you know, viable it already allows areas. That. Yeah. It already allows it. Yeah, that's easier to work with and doesn't potentially cost you your ability to sell your business or rent part of your building. Sell the building, right. Yeah. I'm done. I have, I have nothing. Anybody else? <laughs> I've been running it around. Yeah. All right, so, well, um, if any planning commission members have any further input, uh, feel free to chime in. I think what we'll do is we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Tacoma's regulations and the handout materials that they have. We'll do research into what zones uh, live work or work live are allowed in other jurisdictions. For example, is it only in residential or is it only in commercial or industrial or all of the above? And how do they kind of handle the approach to each of the different zone and then uh, all working towards trying to figure out like what are the benefits to the cities to allow live work or work live. Can I throw something out there? Tacoma is kind of an outlier because it's a city. Let's take a look at uh, Kirkland and Bellevue. I just look at a population there that people do work out of the house and they do consulting work. I'm thinking they might have something on their books. I'm thinking East Side. And probably Sumner. And yeah. Sumner would be good, yeah, yeah, since they've actually done some, yeah. And I'd be, so, I'd be interested to see whether they're, they're still using them or if they've been torn down and replaced by something five stories tall because <laughs> um, it could easily have been because uh, that's been 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So. Commissioner Cock, I, it looked like you had your hand up. Yeah, I just want to say in a general point of view that anything we can do to buffer uh, residential areas, and if, if this uh, gives us an opportunity, great, but if it's just, like I said, more uh, residential thing, and there's been great comments that if you, if you make it too onerous, people just don't do it. They, and then you got regulations on the book that are useless. And That's all I have. I, I also agree with that that um, that if you make it to, uh, if you make it too onerous, nobody will do it, um, and that usually is a sign when it gets too onerous. It's usually a sign that it is being abused. The idea, the concept, is being abused by people, and um, and you know it's like anything. If if a few people enough people abuse a concept or an idea, it goes away. So um, anyway, I, I'd be interested to see what the uh, what what mm -hmm. uh, we come up with for other, uh, what other jurisdictions are doing or what kind of problems they're running into. Well, it sounds like we've wrapped up on um, live, work, work, live for the night. Um, an hour and a half of <laughs> going backwards, apparently, but that's a... That's Actually a, going sideways and looking at what we already have that exists. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really okay. I'm just kind of joking about it. Um, I had more comments. We've, we've, we've chased down details. We've locked in uh, what, what the city's trying to achieve and, you know, the, the intent of the commercial and industrial zones and all of the ramifications of live work units down to the minutia. And, you know, if we, if the planning commission finds like, oh my gosh, like there's no solution here, uh, that that's okay. Um, and, you know, maybe live work is, will make a graceful exit from our code. We've had six units built um, under these regulations that I can recall. How are they doing? Are, are they years. all full with businesses or? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good honest answer. Well, that's part of the issue is like, it's hard to regulate, like who's running a business now? And you know, there's, 
There's two no of signage. us in the planning department that regular that would be you know in, in that area to like go and check it out and try to do enforcement and you know there's no real way to enforce under the rules right now that's why we're here um so we're trying to <laughs> we're trying to bring you uh as much information and if the, you know whatever the planning commission decides is what they what they recommend what? the whole point is the discussion and if you discuss it to the nth degree and find out well wow maybe these don't work I, you know, that with any issue that we bring to the planning commission if you discuss it you spent four or five meetings on this already and so it's it's not for a lack of trying there Sorry, there, um, if I could, Joe, there, there's one other thing we didn't bring up since, we, uh, since, uh, since we're going to go back and get more information, and that is um, we didn't talk tonight about, um, about demand, and uh, demand means, you know, that if, if, if there are enough people who want live-work units, then, you know, supply and demand says that they're going to be willing to, to pay for a live-work uh, 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 live um, uh, live unit. And that means that uh, that there is an incentive for people to leave if they don't have a business because uh, because the uh, and I hate to say it because that's what kills the incentive for people is that uh, if there is a demand for it um, it will drive the price of it up and then people will want to sell them either for the financial gain or they will uh, sell them because they can't afford the taxes <laughs> because of the uh, of the demand for them so we, we need to have demand has to be part of the equation as well it can't just be does it fit the regulations of the city does it does it provide a new niche for uh, another niche for people to to live work in and um, but it might that demand might be the answer to some of the, the things like how do you get people to move out of them or, or do whatever so. in this particular case we're talking about the MC zone and industrial zones and we I think what I've found during this journey here these are great things to talk about but the accommodation for live work work live whatever you want to call it already exists in the MC zone we already have it you already have the combination residential business side and then that's we're just going right down something that uh, well I found that we already have it <clears throat> Yeah, I, but I, I'm not arguing with you, but I think that um, I think that you you look at it more from, I th it, and t correct me if I'm wrong, but you're thinking of it more from like people who has a CPA firm or an architect or somebody like that, and I'm looking at it from the guy, kind of point of view of somebody who wants to build strip canoes or um, or grind coffee or doing something like that, um, and I'm not saying that they both can't use it, but but. Mixed commercial works great for the guy who has a CPA firm or an architecture firm, and he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. Um, uh, he can live on the sixth floor and go down to his thing on the first floor. But uh, the live work unit was more um, a, a way to get people who uh, uh, basically wanted to do it in their home, in their garage, but can't, and are just looking for a little upstairs, downstairs unit to do the thing and a place where you can do that. So yeah. that would be in the residential zones. And that, that was my question earlier. Are we looking at something that no, not, not applies to a residential zone? No, but they can't do it in a residential zone. So right. So we put them in a buffer between two things. So anyway, I'm just saying it's. Uh, uh, <laughs> we should look at the the data that John can come up with. I just wanted to make sure that we knew demand was also a factor mm -hmm. in uh, whether people keep or get rid of a thing if they can't uh, if they can't make a business go. For example. So, anyone else? Are they retired? Okay, so moving on. So we, we have an idea of what uh, we're going to look at other jurisdictional code to see exactly why that intent even happened. I'm just beating a dead horse right now. Okay, on to the next item, unfinished business, none on agenda. New business, none on agenda. Planning Commission discussion information items, none on agenda. However, the floor is open for the good of the order. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. So I will now make a, uh, hang on. Get it right this time. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I do. Okay, we have a motion by <laughs> Commissioner Cog. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All those? Aye. None. Motion carries. 
Meeting is closed at 8.09 p.m. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. That was fun. Yeah. I would not have said a word if I had realized that this was going to blow up. I really like LibWorks. No, no, no. And, uh, Darn, and I thought we were going to get, I thought we were going to get through this.